Welcome back to Homa Studio. This is our 10th installment of our Flask Python Anywhere MySQL series of videos that we're working on. And in this video, we're going to actually display our database information on a page after all that in the 10th video. So we're going to do that. It won't look really good yet because we're not going to do any CSS yet, but we're going to get it to display on the page. So just to pick up where we left off, we displayed that we are connected and we don't have to have this that big when we put our information on the page. And I'm going to try to keep this on the page or at least keep the connected part on the page together. I didn't do that the last time I did this, but we're going to try to keep that on the page. And just to look at what we have here, we have an index page that's basically just displaying a variable of message. So it's either saying successfully connected or not connected. And that's coming from our main PY, which is this part down here. There's two functions happening here. First, there's the connect function, which it's doing a try and accept and returning true and false. And then after that, we're basically using our root decorator to generate our index page and we're using the render template function with these arguments in here to actually generate a page that we put in our templates folder. So that's what we have in here. So we created this. So we're going to be building on this so we can actually go into a table, not our database table, but an HTML table. So we're going to be doing that next. And actually, while I'm in here, I think I'm just going to go and make this a paragraph because I don't need to have it so big. So I'm just going to put a paragraph here and I'm going to get rid of this. Or we could just do SB database and that way it'll have a kind of standard heading there. And then if it doesn't connect, it'll show something else. So we're going to put a table below here. So we're going to get to work doing that. Now, what we have to do first, and, and again, there's some challenges here with two functions because it's hard sending variables between functions. The only thing we were able to send between is this check database connection. And that's because we're actually calling it in here and then having a variable represent that connection. Uh, represent what's returned from there. So it gets a little complicated sending variables back. There's different ways to do it. One is put everything in one function. Another thing you could do is a global variable, which sometimes can get a little more complicated. So what we're going to do is take this out of a function to make it a little easier so that we could send some of this information back here. So that's what we're going to do next. Now, first, what we're going to do is we have to get our information that displays our database on a page. And if you remember, I'll go back here. I guess it doesn't matter where we go. I'm going to open up this Flask folder in a new tab. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to say open in new tab. And we're going to have like five tabs open here. And I'm going to go back to our connect.py because that's where we initially connected and displayed information, displayed our database. And this is the information we need here because we already have this. We already have the connect. So we need this. So I'm going to copy this. Now we're going to adjust this a little bit. So I'm going to copy it and then I don't really need it. So I could close this. I'll go back to my main PY. And where I'm going to put it is under here. I'm going to get rid of this return true. Matter of fact, what I'm going to do is just take this out of being a function because that way we'll be able to send information back. And I'm just going to move this back to here and tab these back. I'll just do this manually for now. And I'm going to get rid of this return true because we don't have a function. So we're not going to return anything. We're just going to just connect and then display some information. So I'm going to just back this up. Now, this loop here, we're actually not going to do that here. But we are going to do some kind of loop because we're going to loop through our results. So we are going to use that, but we're not going to use it here. We're going to actually use that with Jinja2 code in our HTML page. So we're not going to do that here. So I'm going to take this out, but just to be aware, we are going to do a loop, but we're going to do a loop that's basically embedded in our index page. And we are going to go through rows and we are going to go through results. So we're going to use these variables in here. So the last thing we're going to leave here, I'm just going to cut this out right now and just delete it. But just remember, we're going to loop just like that. And we're going to leave this as it is, except again, this is not a function, so we can't return anything. What I'm going to do is actually put this message stuff in here. So now that we are not in a function, we can use our variables and put them in here because we can go from a, a non-function into a function. It's easy to put our variables into there. So we could use any variables from here and put them into here if we want. I think we could even just put, you know, the, the database. We can use database as a variable and send that along and put that in our page if we want to. But just for now, we're just going to actually take this stuff. Message is not connected. And I'm just going to cut this. 
and replace it here. So instead of returning something, we're just going to create a variable. Because now we could use the variable in here when we send it along. And then also I'll cut this one successfully connected. I'll cut that. And I'm going to put this, I guess, first. I could put it first, I think. Because if it works, it's going to say successfully connected. And then we're going to go into actually taking the information from the database. So we're going to do that first because that just means we're connected. And then this is actually the information that's going through the database. So we talked about that before, but the cursor object allows us to go through the database. And then it runs the execute function, which actually does queries. So that's selecting everything there. And then this one, we're going to have a variable that represents my cursor doing the fetch all method which basically just goes through the database and gets it row by row so that's why we're going to use a loop row by row to actually display our information and that's the way it did it in our page and if you remember I'll just I'll open up this again and I thought I kept a text file <laughs> of what printed out I guess I didn't uh, let me see here. I thought I made a text file uh, from the from the console because I don't see it. I don't see a txt file here. I thought I did that. Maybe I have it in databases. Okay, I do. I have it in databases. So if you have that, I'm just going to look at this and go in here. And this was the text file that I kept. And now this is instead of running a query. But I just want to keep in mind here that we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We have six columns per row with the ID, first name, last name, species, color, age. And then we're going to have multiple rows. We're going to have a heading, and then we're going to start displaying our rows. So I'm just keeping in mind how many we have of those so far. So we're going to be looping through each row. There's going to be index number 0, index number 1, index number 2, index number 3, index number 4, and index number 5. That's the way we're going to loop through those and get that information. So I just wanted to keep that open just to look at it. So that's what fetch all will do. And let's look at everything else here. Message equals not connected. Now we're going to have to do something with results. We just can't leave results empty because we're going to send results along. Matter of fact, down here, let's put a comma. And let's put results equals results because we have to send another variable because we want to display the results on the page, not here. And we don't need this if else stuff. I don't think we need any of this. We're basically just going to display the information on our page here. Now we do have to send results along because we, we did create a variable. If we're sending it here for being successful, then we're going to have an issue if we don't have it. So let's just do this for now. This, there's probably a better way to do this, but just for now, let's just put results equals, and we'll just put it in a bracket, and we'll just put a pound sign for now. We'll just use that. We'll just make it as a, as a little list, because that's what happens with the results that come in. So we're just going to do something like that for now. Again, if it's not working, it's not working. So it doesn't matter how it displays. But we are going to have our headings on the page. So I think this is OK so far. We're, we're connecting. We have our information. Uh, I, I think we could even put in our, like, try this. We're just going to say connected to database. And we could put an F here and see if that works. And hopefully that will say connected to that database. And this will just say not connected. And we'll see if we can use that variable as well. So the fact that we have it in here should be OK. Since we're putting the variable in there, I don't think we need to send it along here. We're already going to get that right here. So we're using the, the F formatting method here from Python to do that. So that should be OK. So I'm going to save what I have here. We're sending along our message. We're sending along our results because we have a message here. We have a message here. We have results here. We have results here that are going to display on the page. And I'm just going to save this. So now what are we going to do? But I'm going to go here. Now, right now, we just have a heading, and we have a paragraph that says message, and that's OK. But now we want to display results. So what we're going to do is we're going to loop through our results and put it on a page. But we want to put them in a table. So let's generate a table. Now, let's just look at this. We want a table that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 columns across. And we don't have to worry about how far it is down because there's going to be as many rows in the table as we need. So we're just going to start off with one. So there's going to be one row, and it's going to have headers in there. And then we're going to have a second row, and it's going to have cells in there, TDs. So we're going to have one row that will have THs, and we're going to have one row that will have the TDs. And that will be holding variables so that it can display this information. This will just be hard copied on the page. So we're going to do that. So we got to make a table. Now, we could just go to Replit because it will be easier to make a table there. So I'm going to go to Replit. 
and I'll just create a repel and just make it HTML, CSS, just do a generic title for now. And don't worry about anything else. You could always delete it later. And I'll go down here, get rid of this stuff, and I'll put table, and I'll hit tab, and there's my table. And then I'm going to do a, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to do TR, and then inside there, I'm going to do TH times 6. Let's hit tab. There we go. That's what we want. Um, although it messed up my TR, so I did something wrong. And I'll just go TR tab, and I'll cut this. Didn't mean to screw that up, but so I'll tab this stuff over and I'll put this here and I'll move this back. So there's our first row. So our first row is basically going to have our headings here. Now, what's going to be in here? Well, we're going to put our names that actually display it. So we're going to put ID, we're going to put first name. We don't need variables, these are the headings. So we'll put last name and then we have species, color, and age. So we'll have species, color, and age. And then I'm going to have another row. And let's see if I can do this right. TR, inside TR is TD times 6. Let's see if I do this right. See, it's, it's displaying correctly, and I'll hit tab. And that worked. OK, so that worked OK. So in here, we're basically going to be putting variables. So we're going to be putting variables and those variables are going to represent the information from each row. So actually, I'm going to let that go for now. So we'll wait until we actually put in our loop. So this is what we want. We want this table. So I'm going to copy this table. Again, very simple. Six headings, six cells going across, two rows. So I'm going to copy that and then go back here. And I'm going to put this after this. There we go. So what we're going to do next is make a loop in this row. So we're going to have to use something called Jinja2 code, and it's basically a curly brace and a percent sign. And I'll put two spaces, and I'll do a percent sign and a curly brace. And again, it's not double curly braces. Those are for variables. So in here, what we're going to do is just put some Python code, and we're just going to say for row in results. Now, to end this, there's a special way to end a loop, because the loop's going to end after this. Now the special way we end it is we use the same code here or the same format. I'll just copy it. And we just say end for and it's all together. It's like that. End for. So it's ending that for loop. And there's no space in there. So it's pretty simple, although if you're not familiar with it, you wouldn't know it. You have to like look that up and, and figure it out. So it's it's digging into Flask a little bit more. It's not something that comes real natural because you're not used to writing Python code like that. But you can understand that it's a loop for row and results. And it's going to loop through our results. And it's going to come out with one row. And then what we're going to put here in each of these cells is the first index number, the second index number, the third, fourth, fifth. OK, so we're, we're going to go here and do, let's see, we have six here. We're going to put in curly braces because these are variables. So I'll do space and then these are variables here. So I'm going to do row because that's what we're using. Row is our variable here. And then not only just row, but we're going to use square brackets and put zero for the first index number. And I'll put a space. So it's going to look like that. So the variable for each row, this is going to be row the first item, row the second item, row the third, row the fourth, row the fifth. So we're going to do that and the six. We should have six altogether. So now I'm just going to copy these. I'll copy one of these and just put them in here. And I'm going to change this to one. I'm going to change this to two, three, four, five. So we have six all together, but they start with zero. So these are basically one row. If we had one row in our database, it would display one row. But we have like nine or something, so it should display nine. So again, Jinja2 code here, starting and ending our loop. We have our variables uh, that's being declared right here. That's why we're using these things. We don't have to send them along. And we have our variable here, message. We'll see how our variable works for this one. We'll see if this works okay, if it'll actually say connected to the database. So this is, I guess it is saved. So let me save this. It looks like it's saved. And it looks okay. And I'm seeing variable E we're not going to use. And undefined name database. 
So it's not taking that. Let me leave that out for now. I, I don't want to screw things up, but then we could go back <laughs> and see if we could use that. But it doesn't seem to, be, seem to be recognizing that, even though it is a variable. I don't know why. It's just a string, so it should just put that string in there. Really? Let me leave it in for now and see what happens. And if it's screwed up, we'll just take it out. So I think this looks okay. Everything's saved. And then let's go to our index page. And let's save this. And go to our web app and reload it. And while I'm doing that, I'll close up this. I don't need anything else here for now. Unless we do some CSS. We could do some CSS later. But again, that'll be in the next video. All right, so let's come here and let's refresh it. Something went wrong. Now, there's a lot of things that could have gone wrong, but one of the things that could go wrong is the fact that we got an error about this variable here. So, so let's get rid of that and save that. And let's see if that's the issue first. And then we'll come back here. Index is saved. And we'll reload. And then we'll come here and we'll refresh it. And it actually works. So we're seeing SB database for SpongeBob. We're seeing successfully connected. We're seeing our message here. And we're seeing our table. Now it is a table, but we're gonna format it with CSS. So we could format it and put space in it and color it and do all that. We'll do that in the next video, but this works right now. And of course, when it works, you wanna look and see what you did. So here's the code if you wanna check that out. And again, we had an issue with using the database variable. And I guess because they're actually there are actually arguments inside there. So maybe that's the issue. Maybe if we put it outside here or something, <laughs> it would be okay. Or, or we could just actually put it in here. We could just copy it and put it in here. You know, to we could just do that. Then we don't have to worry about any variables. Then we're just saying it's connected to that database. And you could always change it. So we could do that for now. So I'll just save that. I'll look at my index. Didn't change anything here. Nothing to change. I always like to reload or you should reload when you're changing your PY file. And then here, there it is. Now, obviously you don't wanna always be telling people what the database name is or anything like that, because that's more private information anyway. So successfully connected is fine. You probably wouldn't be putting that on anyway, because if it is connected, you can see it. So I don't even know if that's really necessary. So I might take that back. But since I'm doing that, I'm gonna take this away for now, because I don't know if that really helps anything. And what I will do is go in here and just mess up my password and then save it. And then see if this works okay. Like I said, this is this is something that I looked up and it recommended using these brackets here. I'm not sure if it works okay without the brackets. We could try it. But I'll just hit save. And we'll reload. And we'll refresh. And we're getting not connected. And this is where it still shows those headings because we have that hard coded on the page and it's just putting that there. So I, I don't know if there's something else to do there. It doesn't really matter. If it's not connected, it's not connected. So uh, it's not gonna show any information from the page. So everything's working and not working okay, or at least the way we want it. Uh, as far as what we have here, we're seeing our information. And just to go back and make sure it works again, I'll put this back here and I'll save it and I'll refresh and I'll refresh this. I reload, I'm sorry, I reloaded here and I refreshed here. So that's what we want. So I'll stop this video here and what we'll do in our next video in 11 is we'll do some CSS to actually format this and make it look nice. And then after that, if you wanna keep going, we're gonna put a little form in our page so that we can add elements to our database. So that'll make it kind of a full stack operation here in a very kind of small basic way here. But that's what we're gonna be doing next. So hopefully that worked and thanks for watching Home Studio.